So how are you this morning? How was Thanksgiving? Yeah? So my name's Jim Blake. I serve as the CEO for Unity World Headquarters. And we've got Thanksgiving behind us. And now we're about to come upon Christmas. And this time of the year, as was alluded to earlier, it gets relatively busy for some of us who already have full plates. And so I thought the paradox of becoming still to do more would be a good talk for us this morning. How many of you would like to get more done in your life? How many of you would like to be less stressed out and maybe change the pace of your life? Yeah? So today, I hope to give you a practical tool, which is the simplest, easiest thing in the world that you can do that will provide you this benefit. Even the laziest amongst us can do this. And I know, because I can be lazy sometimes. Quiet, Denise. <laughs> so when I share with you what this practice is, a bunch of you are going to moan and groan, either inside or out loud. Number one, because it's paradoxical in nature and it doesn't make any sense and it's going to be hard for you to believe. And number two, you're immediately going to have at least two excuses as to why you can't do it. So are you ready for this not-so-secret, ancient secret of productivity and creation? Okay, I'm going to give it to you in the form of an old Zen proverb. It goes like this. You should sit in meditation for 20 minutes every day, unless you're too busy. And then you should sit for an hour. Thank you. That's right, my friends. Sitting in the silence is the secret to those things I mentioned earlier. Did you also know that meditation will reduce stress, increase your immune system, reduce your blood pressure? It will also increase concentration, improve your memory, improve your decision making, it improves your emotional control, and it'll improve your self-awareness. So, now be truthful. How many people groaned or moaned when I said meditation? Come on, be honest, own it. Okay. So we're going to talk about that and address that in a minute, because I think I know why you did. So look, I didn't believe this either. It didn't make sense to me. It was paradoxical. The idea of sitting still, slowing down to be more productive. But fortunately for me, so some of you may know this and some of you may not, but I was here from 2006 to 2011. I was employed in Unity World Headquarters. <clears throat> and when I started, I was the director of IT. I had a staff of 15 to 20 people. Very quickly into that tenure, I was promoted to the executive team. And I was the youngest executive ever appointed to that team. Youngest person to ever be appointed to the executive team. Then shortly thereafter, they, appoint, they gave me an additional title of vice president of operations. And I had customer service, and I had shipping and receiving, and very quickly my staff went from 15 to 20 to 119 people. So now I'm young, I'm the youngest executive on this team, I have 119 people, I'm wildly stressed out, I'm working like 60 hours a week, I'm trying to learn this job, learn everything about Unity, but I got really, really lucky. At the same time, I was considering getting into ministerial school. And so to do that, there are prerequisites that are required. So I was in the C program. And so I was fortunate enough to be studying a whole lot of Charles at the time. And if you've read Charles, he talks a lot about going into the silence. At the same time, I was going to the 11 a.m. prayer service. There's an 11 a.m. prayer service that happens every day at the, at the chapel. And so I started my own practice of going into the silence in the mornings. And so what happened for me was this, what manifested for me was this incredible, magical set of synchronicities. 
all of a sudden, my to-do list, I'd be coming in, and people would show up and start to take things off my to-do list. They would volunteer to handle projects for me. Timelines would get extended. All of these magical things, synchronicities, that I couldn't imagine possible started happening. I began to feel like Harry Potter. <laughs> Except for instead of a wand, my weapon was the lotus position. <laughs> and so after a while, I started to just relax into this because it was working. And I found the more I meditated, the more synchronicities would show up and the easier things became. And now I've become to just expect it. And I know it's hard to believe, and I know it sounds completely counterintuitive, and I can see some of you are still skeptical. So let's talk about how it works. What happens when we meditate? What happens when we go into meditation is we actually slow down all of the conflicting thoughts, all of the chatter. Maria Nemeth calls this monkey mind, right? So what do I mean? So you have 100 things you have to do that day, right? So you're walking around, you're going, oh my God, Jim, I got 100 things to do, I got to do this, I got to go to the grocery store, I got to stop, I got to pick up the kid. And at the same time, you're talking about the things you have to do, you're going, I'm never going to get this done. There's no way I can get all these things done. I'm never going to get all these done. It's conflicting. And the film wars teach us that our thoughts create our reality. So at the same time, we're saying we want to get all these things done, we're telling ourselves we're never going to get all these things done. So what happens? We don't get them all done. When you slow down and go into meditation, you shut down the chattering mind. That's the goal. The idea, thank you, the idea <clears throat> is to quiet the monkey mind. In addition to that, you connect to what the Fillmore's referred to as the realm of divine mind or divine ideas. You're never not connected to it, but you are most powerfully connected to it when you're sitting in the silence. You're also, that's also the time when you can most powerfully manifest. So, excuse me for just a second. Let's talk about manifestation and creation for just a minute. So the latest thinkers that have all popped up now after The Secret are suggesting that when you want to create and manifest, don't focus on the details anymore. Don't talk about the details, don't think about those just focus on the desired outcome. The only thing I want to think about is my desired outcome. And then really feel that, really, really concentrate on just the desired outcome. And so the Fillmore teachings tell us to give thanks for it in advance, to be so in touch with it that we give thanks for it as if it has already happened. <clears throat> Michael Beckwith says, you can't have anything you are not willing to become in consciousness. It's impossible. Emily Cady goes on to say that the demand must be made before the supply can come to fill it. So again, it's a bit of a paradox, but the idea is you must first believe it so strongly and see it, which is unseen, before it can become seen. Everybody with me? Okay. So, I know we were meditating, and then we went into creation and manifestation. Let me see if I can tie all this together. So we had our to-do list, right, that we're carrying around in our head that we can't shut off. And then we talked about creation, which is just the end result. So remember earlier, we talked about these are the things we want to get done which is our end result. And we want to go to that place where the divine mind and divine ideas are, right? Silence the mind. So, if we gently consider what we have to get done, we become still, connect with the realm of divine ideas and divine mind in the silence, bam! You've created the perfect place for manifestation. That's how the synchronicities begin to show up because that's when we are most powerful in terms of manifestation. So, now that we know what the trick is, and we know how it works, let me start to wrap up by dismantling all the moaning and groaning earlier that you guys were doing inside. So the first one is this. 
Jim, I don't know how to meditate. I come to the service. I listen to Paulette. It's really awesome. But the whole time I'm just going, am I doing this right? I'm not sure if I'm doing this right. I know I hear her saying that, but I don't know if I'm doing it right. Listen, I was a process guy. So when I first started my practice, and you can ask Denise, I went and bought like 12 books on meditation <laughs> because I wanted to be perfect. I wanted to be the perfect meditator. And guess what? There's no right way. It's like exercise. Thank you. It's like exercise or the clothes you wear. It's whatever works for you. It really is. But I'll give you some tips. The focusing on your breath is just something to occupy the chatter, the monkey mind. So literally, if you just sit and go, I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out. I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out. All that is, is to stop the mind from going, holy crap, did I turn off the coffee pot? I need to go to the store, I need to pick up the kid. If you're saying I'm breathing in, breathing out, that doesn't, you don't have that anymore. You with me? Or pick a mantra. Pick a mantra that you can say over and over. It's just something to quiet the monkey mind and get you to that place of stillness. At, over time, you'll reach a place called no mind, which I picked up. It's a term I picked up in the movie The Last Samurai. But basically, you won't have thoughts, or you'll have very few. And if you do, don't beat yourself up going, oh my gosh, I had a thought. Then you're completely not in stillness. Because then you're like, oh my gosh, I had a thought. I can't believe I had a thought. So you're defeating the entire purpose. So remember when you were kids and you used to lay on the ground and look up the sky and watch the clouds float by and make shapes out of them? Same thing. When you're in silence and you have a thought, oh my goodness, did I turn off the coffee pot? Just wave at it. Hello, thought. Coffee pot, thought. See you. Gently passing by. And let it go. And go right back to breathing in, breathing out. It's a simple, easy technique. There's no right or wrong way. The idea is just to try to quiet the mind as best you can. Now, some people can't sit still, and that's okay too. Some people meditate, can get to that place walking. Some people can get to it on a treadmill. Some people can get to it. My yogis in the room say they get to that place on their mat doing yoga. Again, it's whatever works for you. The important thing is to just get there and make that connection. Okay, excuse number two. Jim, I don't have time. <laughs> have you been listening? You don't have time not to. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, really. I didn't have time either, I didn't think. And I really didn't think I had a lot of time. So I started at three minutes. But really, start with three. Pick three, pick five. Don't go to 20 or an hour like this in Proverbs. Just pick a small number and start. What will happen is your practice will grow naturally. It's your natural state. I kid you not. You will enjoy it so much, you will, you will just naturally, all of a sudden you'll go, oh my gosh, I was, I was under for 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes. You will crave it. It is that powerful. So just start small and let yourself grow with it as you become more comfortable. Okay, here's the most important part. You have to make it a commitment and a priority. It has to be consistent. You have to prioritize this above everything else in your day. You have to work your whole day around it so that it's consistent. And it has to be every single day. So if something pops up, kid has to go to school early, then you have to get up earlier. If something comes up so you can't do it at that time, you have to do it later in the day but it has to be consistent and it has to be every day or you won't be Harry Potter. You'll come to me and say, Jim, it doesn't work. And I'll say, was it consistent? Come on, be honest. And you'll go, no. That's not my fault. It has to be consistent. It has to be a priority. I promise you, after a while, you won't want anything to interrupt it. It's, I'm telling you, it's a natural state. It becomes addictive and it really won't change the pace of your life. So we've talked about this being about productivity today because I really did want you to have a practical tool for going into the holidays so that you could truly enjoy the holidays and not be stressed. But let's be honest. This is really about a lot more than that. 
when you make this a practice, you will develop your own intuition in ways you never thought possible. We all walk around and think certain people are touched and blessed because they have great intuition, right? They're magical, they're psychic. When you do this, you develop your own intuition. You know why? Because you'll be able to, to, you'll be able to distinctly tell the difference between your own still small voice inside and the monkey mind chatter. It will become so clear to you. You will also deepen your own experience of yourself. And most importantly, you'll deepen your experience of the divine. And that's what it's really all about. So, go forth, become still, do more, and be more. Namaste.